Hi, this is Joy at Red Pine Quilt Shop. Today we're going to actually talk about how to press your blocks. And I want to start by talking a little bit about what you should do before you actually start cutting your blocks. I encourage everybody to pre-treat their fabric before they start to cut their block pieces out. I like to actually use a product called Easy Press Fabric Treatment. This is my favorite starch alternative spray, and you can put it in a mister bottle that comes in a pack with it, or if you have your own mister bottle, you can buy it just in a bottle like this, or you can buy it even in bigger containers. But this is a great starch alternative spray. And when you are pressing your yardage um, and getting it ready to be cut, at that point in time, I like to actually mist it with this fabric treatment spray because it does a couple of things. One, it really helps to get out those stubborn wrinkles. And two, it will actually do some pre-shrinking on that fabric. If there's some shrink that's gonna happen with that fabric, misting it with a treatment spray and then ironing it till it's dry will definitely help to get some of that shrink out of the fabric before you cut it and put it in your blocks. Um, we also have a nice option um, for an automatic sprayer that you can load with your Easy Press Fabric Treatment. This is actually a new product that just came out. Um, it is actually a rechargeable mister. So there is a USB port on the back that you can actually plug in and charge the mister. You have a dial on the front, so you can adjust this to how heavy you want this spray to be. You can set it light or you can set it heavy. And then it actually just has a one button press to mist, and it will mist your fabric. Um, press it again to turn it off, and then like I said, that's your adjustment for how heavy you want the mist to be. Works great when you're doing yardage. Especially if you're someone who has a big board, you can turn the automatic mister on and you can just miss the whole thing, turn it off, press that section, and then um, move your fabric forward and do another section. And it's nice to not have to be pumping um, a mister bottle. So we love the new electronic sprayer. But definitely, before you cut your fabrics, make sure that you are treating it with a spray like this. Um, it also is going to help stabilize any bias edges that you end up having in the blocks that you're making if you're using a fabric treatment spray like this that's a starch alternative spray so easy press fabric treatment is my favorite definitely do that before you cut the fabric out for your blocks once you have your blocks cut though and you're piecing at that point in time i encourage you to turn off the steam on your iron and work with a dry iron if you have the steam going on your iron um, and you're introducing a lot of steam into your blocks as you're making them, um, you have a lot higher risk of stretching, distorting those blocks, um, and a higher risk of actually starting to shrink block sections potentially if you're doing a lot of steaming um, as you're working on parts of blocks like you see in front of me today. So I would definitely encourage you no steam dry iron when you start to work on blocks. So when you're pressing blocks, most patterns are going to tell you what direction to press the fabric in. If they don't tell you, a general rule of thumb is that you're going to press towards the dark. So here I have a light side, I have a dark fabric, I would press towards my dark fabric. The one thing that I encourage you to do though is to look ahead in your pattern and if you have a pattern that doesn't have pressing directions, look ahead, see what you're going to be doing next, and try to plan your pressing if you can so that you can nest seams. And I'm gonna show you what that means here in just one second. Um, but it's going to make it a lot easier to assemble your block if you can nest your seams. So for this block, this is gonna be a little four patch. I'm gonna set my iron down on this seam. And this is what's called setting the seam. And it really just drives those stitches down into the fabric, buries them in the fabric so that you can open that seam up and it'll open up and lay flatter than if the st stitches were sitting on top of the fabric, it really drives them down into the fabric. So then I'm gonna go ahead and fold back my piece. And this actually is a square. 
So I have straight of grain, so I can actually nose right into that seam allowance with my iron a little bit if I want to. And I'm going again straight of grain, so I'm not gonna have issues with it stretching. So I like to do just little sweep strokes with my iron to open that seam up. Um, you don't wanna start doing this by any means, um, but at the same time, you do leave a little bit of motion to open that seam up. So there is one. I'll set the seam on the other part of my four patch black and I will do the same thing here. I find if I hold this up a little bit, it actually helps to get that seam to flap, flap over and, and, and swoop over better. And now I have both of them pressed open. So to nest your seams, you know, a, they were both pressed towards the green, but for my little four patch black, it's gonna look like this. So at this point, what I can do is I can butt the, the piece that's pressed this way and the piece that's pressed this way, I can butt those seams right up against each other. And I'm gonna just line them up, I'm gonna get them butted up, and I can kinda just push actually with my fingers to make sure they're nested really close. And now if you look, I'll just flip that back so you guys can see what that looks like. You see how they're nested right up against each other? So that will be a perfect intersection when I sew it. Um, so anytime you can figure out a way to nest your seams, definitely do that because that will help you um, lining up intersections within a block, within block sections, rows when you're putting them together um, throughout your whole quilting project really. So next we're going to talk about half square triangles. So half square triangles can be cut various ways. So you want to make sure with how you are cutting your half square triangles that you know where the grain is. Now this half square triangle is made using the technique where you take a square, you sew a quarter inch on either side of the middle line, and then you cut it down the middle. So that is how this one was made. So my straight of grain with this half square triangle construction method is going to be here and here. And I have all bias in that middle line. So when I go to press this, I wanna make sure that I'm not going into that bias. So I'm going to go ahead and set my seam and to press this half square triangle, given how this was constructed, I am going to want to press this way and this way. If I press along that seam line, I'm pressing right into the bias. So I am going to go ahead and go this way and I'm going to go this way. And both of those actually are, gotta just get that flipped back. There we go. Um, both of those will actually be straight of grain presses. So that is straight of grain, and this is straight of grain. But what I want to not do is I don't wanna do this because as soon as I nose into the side of that seam allowance with my iron at this angle, I'm pressing right into all that bias and then I'm gonna stretch my black. But I can press this way, I can press this way, but I just don't wanna go at that side angle. So stay away from that 45 degree angle, go straight and go straight. So follow the grain this way, this way, those are okay and you won't stretch your block. Um, quarter square triangles, those are actually a little bit trickier to work with. Um, quarter square triangles, a lot of people wonder why they're cut this way, but they frequently are going to be cut where you're going to take a square and you're going to, going to bisect it on the diagonal twice. Um, and a lot of people wonder, why do we do that? You know, why don't I just take a square and split it on the diagonal once, like I do for a half square triangle. The reason for that is because you want to end up, when your quarter square triangle block is pieced, you want to end up with straight of grain along the outside edges. And if you cut a, square, a, a, a piece of fabric that was going into a quarter square triangle block, like we cut this half square triangle, you would end up with bias on the outer edges of the block. So that is why they frequently have you cut a square, bisect it twice, and that is how you um, cut the pieces that are going into a quarter square triangle block. So I have one of the quarter square triangle block pieces sewn, 
I actually have two of them sewn. So these actually will become a quarter square triangle block that looks like this after they're pressed. So when you're working with quarter square triangle blocks, what you want to remember though is your straight of grain is right along there and right along there. It's along the baseline edges. So you want to make sure that you're thinking about that when you press. So again, we'll go ahead and set the seam on this one. And now on this one, my straight of grain is right here. It's along the baseline. So I want to make sure that is the way that I press. I don't want to nose into the side of this. I want to make sure I'm following that. So always follow the grain line. So I am going to follow the grain line and I'm making sure my iron is following that grain line moving right down the baseline because then I am pressing into the grain and I will not distort my block. So always think about where the grain is. Um, pressing towards the grain is always going to be, pressing into the straight of grain is always going to be your best bet when you're pressing blocks. I have a couple tools that I'm gonna show you guys that are helpful when you're dealing with things that are stubborn to press. Um, these tools kind of do the same thing in a radically different way. This tool is actually a um, fabric softening pen. It's called the Fabric Folding Pen from Clover. We have these up on our website. You can find them at www.redpinequiltshop.com. And this contains a highly concentrated fabric softening agent. So I can actually use this to finger press very effectively. So here's a half square triangle black that I haven't pressed. And I'm going to just run this right down on top of the stitches. And it will let me very effectively finger press this block. And you can see how well that is pressed with nothing more than my fingers and the fabric softening agent. So I use this actually sometimes if I just have a little bit of time to sew and it doesn't make sense to heat an iron up. Um, I also use it when I'm working on a bigger block and I have a lot of seams that I have to flip back over. So I'm starting to maybe connect block sections or connect one block to another. And when I press, I have a lot of um, seam intersections that have to get flipped back when I press. Um, if I actually put just a little stroke of this down that seam allowance, those will flip back over so much more easily when I've put the fabric softening agent along that seam line. So use this when you are dealing with a lot of seams that you have to turn back as you're pressing. Um, it will make them flip back over. So that's how I use the fabric folding plan from Clover. The other one that I use is um, the Easy Press Fabric Pen. It is actually loaded up with Easy Press Fabric Treatment, which is a starch alternative spray. So this is a starching agent, a stiffening agent, um, versus this being a softening agent. So how I use this one is if I have a block that I have pressed, um, and there's a spot, maybe where a lot of seams, maybe you've got a hexagon block or something and you've got like six seam intersections coming together and you've got a spot that you've pressed and it just won't flatten out. That is when I get this out because I would rather spot apply a little bit of fabric um, treatment solution than to mist my whole block or turn the steam on in my iron and it introduce a bunch of water to my block. Um, which, like I said, has the potential to shrink and distort. A little spot application of this, though, can knock those stubborn spots down. So I'll just put a little daub here on that seam allowance, um, and then I can hit that spot, and it will really flatten those spots out that are stubborn spots, spots that don't want to stay flat. And you can see now how incredibly flat that block is laying now that... I have hit it with a little bit of that fabric treatment. So this is, like I said, a starch alternative. Use it to deal with the stubborn spots that you've pressed, but that just don't want to flatten out. A little job of this is a safer way to um, get those, those spots to flatten out than introducing a lot of steam to your block 
or misting an entire block with fabric treatment solution. Just spot apply it where you need it. So those are my tips for you on um, pressing and pressing within getting your fabric treated and ready to ready to cut pressing when you're working on blocks and a couple tools that are helpful to have um, when you have stubborn spots to deal with again you can find these items on our website at www.redpinequiltshop.com and we hope you guys got some helpful tips out of our video today thanks for joining us <music>